morning, afternoon. Good, yes, afternoon. good afternoon. Hi, guys. How are you? Thank you for being here. Jenny and I are going to share with you um, a common theme of really what we've come to learn. It's been almost four years since we were on Biggest Loser, our finales, so it's been four years of our life since then. And one of the biggest things that we've learned is helping people. Every single person here today has something that's a personal best in you. And so what we're going to share with you is some of what we experienced on Biggest Loser, but more importantly, how we're living our life now, what we've learned from other people. We've had the great privilege of meeting all kinds of people in all different fields. And what I will tell you is people are getting healthy in many different ways. And so somewhere in what we're sharing today, we hope you see something for yourself. And then after we're done, we'd love to be able to answer any questions. And like was mentioned, we're going to be doing a cooking demo to kind of share with you some of the things that we had eaten while we were on Biggest Loser, because everybody likes to know what we were eating. So let's turn to the next slide. So Jenny, would you just kind of share? Jenny's really the reason we got. I had no interest in being on Biggest Loser at all. It was all Jennifer. So I'd like really Jenny to kind of share how that all came about. Absolutely. So being a natural fan of the show, I watched it every single week. And, um, you know, I've, I was always somebody that was really hardcore into working out, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't fit. Um, I knew I was strong. I knew I had determination. And that was why I really connected with The Biggest Loser. And I watched it every single week and said to myself, you know, that's me. I can do this. These challenges, I got them, definitely. And I said to myself, you know, if I could do these, you know, like, why not? So I was watching a commercial, and all of a sudden it flashed on the screen, you know, um, you know, for a chance to be the biggest loser, go to this website, come to an open casting call. So that began my journey onto The Biggest Loser. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, um, I'd struggle with my weight my entire life. Ever since I was about five years old, I was always overweight, and I was always the chubby kid in the bikini at the beach or in the leotard at gymnastics or playing softball or soccer or even karate. Uh, so I didn't really know what it was like to be in a position where I was healthy or fit or felt really good about myself. So in the beginning, um, in the beginning, this is pretty much where my dad and I started. And this is the moment when I decided that I wanted to make a change in my life. This picture actually is with the winner of season five. This is Ali Vincent. Um, and this was actually taken the day uh, we went to go see her at the Jacob Javits Center in New York City. She was uh, doing an appearance there, and I actually had just gotten rejected for season 10 um, when I was trying out. Tried out for season 9, didn't get on. Tried out for season 10, uh, didn't make it as well. But this day, meeting Allie and really connecting with her and sharing my journey with her and also connecting her with my parents, I didn't realize what a shift that was about to make or cause for my family. Um, so, you know, fast forward about six more months, I tried out for season 11, I was relentless. That's something that many people that know me and know me well is I don't give up. I'm all about perseverance and I won't stop until I get what I want. So um, season 11 came around and they said to me, you know, we want you, but we need a partner. We need somebody. So who was crazy enough in my life to take part in this journey, but nobody else but my father? Um, and as you can see from the picture, I mean, I love my mom too, but all three of us could have benefited from it, and we did be benefit from it, you know, fast forward a few years later. Um, my dad was all about it, and he said, let's do it. The thing that was kind of crazy and what people don't know about The Biggest Loser, they see it on television, and they say, oh, you know, like, that's so cool. You know, all these people, you got 22, 24 people a season. Um, but how'd they get there? So just so to give you a little backstory, um, every season, 250,000 people actually try out for this show. So there are casting calls all throughout the country, and we were lucky enough to be picked. So really, it's like going out buying a lottery ticket and finally being picked for this lottery of a lifetime. And so started our journey. So we're going to show you a little clip of what it's like. Um, or, there's one other one before you and right, I. Right. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to go on to show you um, a little clip of what it was like when we first got on the show. But before that, 
This is actually the day we took off from Newark Airport before we went to The Biggest Loser. Um, we didn't know if we were returning. We didn't know if we were coming back um, or gonna get on the show. You go through crazy medical testing and they either send you home or they keep you on the ranch, just so how it was for our season. And this picture was taken right before we got on the plane. Little did we know our lives were about to change forever. So fast forward about a month after we went through a whole bunch of medical testing and a whole bunch of interviews with the network and all these executives, and we were chosen for the show. And what you're going to see is pretty much a glimpse of what our first weigh-in was like. We have volume on this? It's okay. Thanks. I know it sounds strange, but I never thought of myself at really being at risk. I've been kind of like fooling myself, and I've always called myself functionally fat. And I've lost weight many, many times in my life, but I put it back on, and everybody's nice, and they don't ever judge me for it. But you see the disappointment in their eyes. The big aha moment actually happened for me the other day when I had to go for a test. I laid there on that table for the first time in my life. And it, it felt like I could be a person that could actually die. I, I have to tell you, I've never had that feeling in my life. I felt, felt invincible. And I literally lay on that table and I swore that if I could just get through this, that show or not, I just, I, I don't want to live this way. To me, this is a turning point in my life. Big time. Jay, you ready to go home? No, Bob. Perfect position. Stay right there. Five, four, three, two, one. That's the mental strength of an athlete. That's what I'm going to tap into. There's an athlete in this man, and I'm going to find him. It's such a powerful feeling. Bob just makes me do more than I think I can even do. I want it all, Jay. I want it all. Nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. A year ago, I couldn't wear my wedding ring. And for good luck, I got my wedding ring back on. It's great news. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Move up and down, up and down, up and down. I need these legs to not stop. I just need to keep these legs moving. 349, that's, that's what we're looking for tomorrow? Step up. Let's go, step up. I haven't seen 350 in a long time, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna push myself hard this week and go for dropping 15 pounds. <laughs> the numbers are rolling, and all of a sudden it stops. 350 pounds, and I jump for joy, hands in the air. I'm like, I will take it. I'll take that all day long. So as Jenny said, um, what I didn't realize was the fact that I had a near fatal heart arrhythmia because I had sleep apnea. That's what they were showing that, that was going on. And I did not know that. And I was actually kind of a little bit of a smart aleck about it because I called myself functionally fat because luckily for me, I didn't have high blood pressure, I didn't have high cholesterol, but what I didn't know was sleep apnea was literally killing me. I could have went to bed and never woken up, and I had no idea. And, and you hear a lot about it today where people talk about it's important to get sleep, um, and it is. But you don't have to be my size to be able to have sleep apnea. So I would recommend to everybody here and everybody in your family, do yourself a favor because we have a friend that's petite, she's 90 pounds, she's very tiny, she has sleep apnea. It actually, what they found nowadays is that it contributes to dementia, it contributes to diabetes. And as I was not the biggest loser, I did make it to the final four, there were three women and myself. Um, and part of the reason why that had happened was because I was very compliant with my CPAP machine. And when you get really good rest, you actually, your metabolism works in your favor, and it did for me. So a lot of what I want you to realize is that when you see the show, it's always exciting, the scale is the money shot, it's the drama, it's TV. But as we're sharing things with you today, what I really want you to realize is that's a caricature of our life. It gives everybody an opportunity to kind of see what's possible, but understand, 
there, we're away in California. We're not working. We don't have internet access. We don't have access to our family. We don't have anything other than to do than eat very healthy. And you'll hear some of the things today when we talk about it in the cooking demo. But we ate very healthy, and we constantly moved all along. So it shows you that if you're eating healthy and you're moving and you're exercising, you'll lose weight. But what I want you to remember, if you watch the show in the future or you look at any of these things here, what this shows is it shows that no matter where you are right now, where you are in your health, where you are in what you think you can or can't do, you're basically looking at 20 people, 22 people that in their mind have given up, that feel broken, that think they can't, they come up with every single reason why it's not possible. But what we've come to understand and learn is it's not the food you eat and it's not the exercise, it's what's eating you. And so you, everybody that's here today, this is an example. People say to Jenny and I all the time, if only I could get on Biggest Loser, I could change my life. It's helpful, but it doesn't change your life unless you decide to. And what we always share with people is coming to an event like this, Women's Health Expo, your hospital. There are so many people that are out here that will help you, but you have to surround yourself with a circle of support. That's what Biggest Loser did. Like Jenny said, we went through extensive medical testing. Um, they spent a fortune on us when we were there. While we were doing the challenges and things, every, what you don't see here is there's two EMTs here making sure that we don't drop dead. There's always somebody there. We're being checked all the time. So we were under strict medical supervision the whole entire time. So I can't stress enough you live the biggest loser lifestyle if you choose where you live, but you have to be the first people to step up and ask for help and support and be open and vulnerable and ask for that. What we like to share uh, with everybody that we meet and whenever we share our story also is that the show really does glorify a person and their abilities based on television. So we're no different than each and every one of you. We are normal, living, breathing people that were just given the chance of a lifetime, one, because we were crazy enough to do it, mm -hmm. and two, because we really wanted it. So over, a over the course of about eight and a half, nine months, we worked tirelessly, as my dad said, with diet and exercise just to make sure we were getting as healthy as possible and learning as much as we could in that time. Um, I went from 278 pounds to 164 pounds. I lost 114 pounds in eight and a half months time. My dad, his highest weight was 400 pounds and he lost 181 pounds, bringing himself to 219 pounds. It's a pretty crazy amount of weight to lose, but it was actually all done from eating well and exercising, and we made the choice to make a change in our lives. And that's really what we share with every single person that we meet. There's no secret sauce. There's no television show that's going to help you to do this. We were just shown in a pretty epic way to all of America, our journey, and what it was like to live it alongside us. Kim, my wife, Jen's mom, um, has a pretty amazing story. Kim, just come up here for a second. Um, one of the things that was neat about the Biggest Loser experience is it affected our entire family. Um, our son Matthew was also affected by, and you'll see a picture of Matt in here. When Kim, before Biggest Loser, uh, what had happened was Kim was one of the, uh, the family members that got a chance to be able to um, come to the show. And I'll let here. her just, How hold on a second. Here we go. Yeah, go to the podium. Switch. Okay. Go ahead. So I'll let Kim kind of share a little bit of her story. When, um, when they went on the show, we were partners in a business, and two of my business partners left, and I was left behind. The great part about the show was that their season, they decided to bring out one member of each of the families of the teams that were on the ranch that had to lose the most weight at home. So that was me. And I was medically tested by the show staff with Dr. Heisenga, and he told me on national television I had to lose 90 pounds. So I'm in my 50s, and I'm tired of eating garbage food because I had been eating a lot of garbage food, and I thought, you know, this is great. I can maybe lose 60 pounds. Maybe if I try, maybe I can lose 70 pounds. And, you know, if I really work at it, well, maybe I could lose 80 pounds. Long story short, they were on the show. While they were on the show, I lost, by finale, 50 pounds. I did it at my own pace. I wasn't on Biggest Loser. Thank you, God for going with her, because I wasn't on the show. And while I was home, I did it on my own. I started with walk 
ladies, all of you can do this. I started walking my dog. That's revolutionary. I used to put the dog on the line. He'd go out, do his business. I would slide the door open to the back door, and the dog would come in. That was my exercise. I got arm exercise. It was really great. When they left, I t started taking the dog for walks. And then I started mild exercise, a little bit of extra walking, a little bit of on a treadmill or on an elliptical. And then I started stretching for myself because I liked it, and it just felt really good. It was like a gift to me. After about 12 months, I had taken off 80 pounds on my own. And that was through just eating healthy. I got rid of processed foods in my diet. And it was just from basic activity, knowing that when they came home, I had to be a support team for the two people that were the most important people in my life to change their entire lifestyle. So I either wanted to be part of that journey or I was going to be left behind. And there was no way I was being left behind. So I would go along with them. I would do the, all the new things of exercise that they learned when they were on the ranch. And I, I tried out so many different methods of exercise, some of which I absolutely love today and had never done before, and I've embraced them. Some of which were maybe not as, as good for me, but I've embraced the things that I love. And now, the exercise that I do, I do what I enjoy. It's not exercise to me. It's fun. So it's not something I have to work at. The food that I eat is not a diet because I eat healthy foods that I make sure have a lot of good flavor and they're good for me. You know what? It's not a diet. It's enjoyment. So I'm living a life that I enjoy. I'm 105 pounds less than when they left for the ranch, and I've never felt better in my life. You all can do it too. <laughs> So four years later, as a family, we're down 435 pounds. Actually, my dad's lost weight, my sister's lost weight, my brother-in-law's lost weight, and actually our family was on um, season 16, where we did a whitewater rafting trip, and we all went down the river, and we have this real fun little, if you go to Laura Bar, you can see this video of our family doing an 800-pound pants drop, you know, where you hold the pants up in front and everybody drops their pants. So the thing that's exciting is that when you start to get healthy for yourself, it's not just for you, but it's your entire family, a circle of support. And I really realized, as the dad in the family, I was the catalyst, and I really was the person that kind of led everybody down the track. So when we talk about childhood obesity, it's really parental obesity, and I've come to understand, and so I try to talk to parents and explain to them. Actually, the kids are a lot smarter than parents, and if you let them start to do some things, they'll help to kind of shift that. And that's what happened in our family. I mean, Jenny was really the ringleader that got us moving along and made a major change in our life. So, so what's different this time? What's the secret for us? What have we found? And what I want to share with you, next slide, is that what we share in the next three secrets is, in essence, it's from a lifetime of our challenges. It's never over. Constantly, people don't live like this. They live up and down. They have stress of work, life, all kinds of things, kids. Um, we've <laughs> learned from, you know, 22 contestants on season 11, so we were all together for a long period of time, so we got to understand what others were thinking. Because, see, there's a lot of secrets in people's minds. They think they're the only ones that have challenges, but the more you open up and share with others, it's very freeing to share what you're having challenges with, and you're like, wow, I'm not the only one, and it really helps you. There's 300 alumni from Biggest Loser. Um, we've helped over hundreds of different people on Biggest Loser resorts. Kim and I have had an opportunity, and Jenny has as well, to go to the resorts and help people thousands of people online and in person, and we've also done one-on-one -on -one health coaching. So what we're sharing are like three things that we found that seem to be the common links behind why people tend to be successful. And we're not talking about perfection. We're talking about wellness, and wellness means a lot of things to a lot of people. One thing to keep in mind, if you can lose weight, that's helpful, but one thing that they know scientifically now, just sheer moving and exercise, getting off that couch, makes a world of difference. Even if you never lost another pound, you can't sit. Your body just clogs up and it just, it's bad for you. So turning on your best, personal best, is about three secrets that we've found. Secret number one, I am not a tattoo guy, but I have one tattoo. And this tattoo says, next slide, what you're for strengthens you. And it has the date of the finale. I think it's May 26th? May 24th, 2011. May 24th, okay. Um, and what that means, is the flip side of that quote is, what you're against weakens you. Now, I, was, I love that quote. 
And I was going to tattoo that on my arm, and, and Kim said, I don't think you should be really tattooing the word against and weakens on your body. But I wanted to have something that I could remember from the show, that I could have forever, whatever I was out there. And it was really Jillian when, when we were in New Zealand. And just so you know, when it wasn't my dream, as I told you, to get on the show was Jenny's. I love my daughter. She's an amazing person. And I felt a lot of guilt for the fact that Jenny lived in a lifestyle that really caused her to be that person in terms of her being challenged with her weight. Here's a dad realizing that she's got a weight challenge. We take her and send her to a nutritionist. And when we pick her up from the nutritionist, I'm like, you guys hungry? And he's like, yeah. It's like, let's go for Chinese food. Chinese food was my drug of choice. I mean, I eat Chinese food, and then I would mainline like three um, Entenmann's donuts and milk afterwards. I mean, I just didn't get it. I mean, here I'm concerned about my daughter, but we would go out, and I would just keep perpetuating this. So I, I really come, I had really understood that I needed to make that, that change overall. So secret number two, Jenny, why don't you share about what we did on the ranch a little bit with this? So when you look at, when you look at where you're going, it's a lot easier to get there if you're taking small steps every single step of the way. So the idea of what's get, uh, what gets measured and shared gets done. Now, if we're talking about the ranch, we were cut off from society. We did not have any access to the outside world. There was no internet, magazines. They wouldn't even let us read newspapers. Um, pretty much they use the analogy that if there was a natural disaster outside of the ranch, you would not know it. So this is a controlled environment. In that time, we learned about measuring everything we did, whether it was down to how much sleep we were getting or what we were eating um, or how much we were exercising because that was just as important because when you're eating, you want to make sure that you're burning those calories to make sure that you're in a deficit and then losing weight, especially as it related to us in such a, an extreme case. So when we talk to people, we share the fact that we did measure our food. We did set goals for ourselves in terms of exercising and how many calories we needed to, to lose or to burn. I remember when I started, my, my, uh, Jillian told me that I needed to burn 6,500 calories a day, um, every day, in order to lose weight and stay on the ranch and stay in the game for my size. That's a lot. 3,500 calories is one pound. So I was losing one and some each day because of how I was moving and what I was eating. So when we talk about what gets measured and shared gets done, this relates to what life was like when we came home. So the idea of social media or connecting with people in your community when you feel good about something or you want to share it, it actually creates a level of accountability to help other people to support you to achieve your goals. So in this case, we talk about what gets shared gets done. Social media is huge. If you have a weight loss goal or something that you feel as though you need support with, you can reach out through social media and declare what you want and ask for the support of those around you. Post your progress. People will follow suit. It's something that we apply today, and my dad has actually led the charge with um, a movement um, that he's going to share with you in a little bit uh, that has really changed how we live our life after Biggest Loser and remain accountable. Um, you know, the same thing applies for if you're not on social media and you have a group of support and you have a community that supports you. Um, even if it's people that you live with and talk to on a daily basis, share what's going on. Share your thoughts. You're not alone in this. And that's what makes this, this part of the journey so cool because you all think that you're the only one that deals with it and you're not. So, if you chat with your friends, if you chat with your family, you'll be surprised how much your world will open up and you'll be able to relate and share your struggles and share your successes. So something on the show that we did use, um, and this is something that we recommend, is a calorie monitoring system of some sort. If you're looking to lose weight or just basically monitor what you're eating and how much you're burning. This is something we used on the ranch. There are so many of these things that exist today, whether it's a Fitbit or an Up24 um, from Jawbone, but these tracking devices are really great and they help you to stay accountable each day as you're working towards a goal. So, so <laughs> go ahead. One of, one of the things this that happens favorite. a lot of times <laughs> when people are thinking about calories and exercising, um, if you actually went to Dunkin' Donuts or your favorite bakery or whatever, and there's, understand something. 
making a change in your wellness is not saying, I'm never eating a piece of pizza. I'm never eating a donut. I'm never, never doesn't work. There, mm -hmm. I, we've never met any never people. Even the most fit people we've ever met are never people. Bob Harper, Jill, they all eat something. It's not that. It's that it's not the issue of the donut. It's the donut and the shame and the mindset that says I've blown it and then I eat the whole dozen donuts and I've done that many times. Okay, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm the poster child for that. I'm the poster child for somebody that was a secret eater. On Biggest Loser, I was 400 pounds. My top weight was 435. There's nobody that knows how to mainline donuts and, and sit in the fast food line and all. I've done it all and I've had to learn how to get out of that by actually admitting it and realizing it and, and being truthful. But if you actually go back just for one second, so if you start to think every time you see something, it's not that you can't. You can. But realize when you go and you eat that donut that if you're actually trying to burn the calories, it could take you 45 minutes or an hour for that. So, it, so if you eat it, slow down. Savor it. Just absolutely enjoy what you're doing, but be much more conscious of it. So next slide. So as I said, the truth will set you free. I would say for myself, the biggest thing that I've learned after Biggest Loser is the ability to become truthful about what I'm actually doing or not doing and not fooling myself. When you've lived, I'm 57, I'll be 58 in July. When you've lived most of your life overweight, living as when you start out as a chubby kid, wearing the Huskies, then you get teased and all that, all that stories in your life, I would blame everything other than myself. And this isn't about blame, but I just had to finally get truthful about what I was actually really doing or not. Every one of us in this room, and if we go to the next slide, I want you to think of, if you don't think of anything else today, what Jenny and I share, in each moment, you have a choice. Every single moment, every morning, every meal, and every moment, you're at zero. So everybody, unless you've been eating in your seat, has not gained any weight. You haven't gained a pound, anything at all. In fact, when you leave here, you don't have to wait till Monday to start. You don't have to wait till after your birthday or whatever. That kind of thinking gets us in tr trouble every single time. So it's really more of getting present in each particular moment, being honest with yourself. Just stop and pause before that and think about, is it something you really want? And if you do, please slow down and enjoy it, but don't beat yourself up afterwards. Or if you really have a goal, get present to what that goal is and, and live what that is. Next slide. So what Jenny had mentioned was we wrote a book and if you go to, I know it's a strange name, but if you go to mypetfat.com, um, it's actually a website I started in 2003, one of my many times stopping and starting losing weight. But if you go to that site, you'll learn about this particular book. And this came about because what I forgot to tell you was that when Jenny and I got on the show, I got eliminated in week seven because Jenny and I got tossed around like a ping pong ball. And we got thrown over to the other side, and it was really horrible. And we had a team weigh in, and we lost the weigh in. And I sacrificed myself and said, I don't, I don't want to be here. I want to let Jenny stay here. And so I went home in week seven. I thought my journey was over, done. And so for the four weeks that I was at home, um, I just started using my smartphone. I started taking pictures of everything I was eating. I started taking pictures of when I was at the gym. And I just was sending those texts and videos to the producers for no other reason was I wanted to be accountable. I wanted to let people know about it. And what had happened was I got to be the only contestant. There were 10 that had gone home by that time. I was the only contestant that was brought back. And the reason I got brought back was because the story producers were kind of like, what is, they went to the psychiatrist. And we did have a psychiatrist on the show. And they said, what is with this guy? Is he like manic? And the, the, the psychiatrist said, no, he's just really passionate about what he's doing. And what I learned in that process was without an app or anything else, but what I learned was if I started taking pictures of what I was eating and I started to look at that, I could see through a week, like, isn't that interesting? All my food's brown. I like don't eat any vegetables or like, wow, there's all kinds of things in or I'm not exercising. It helped me get more conscious. So this book is really about the realization that the app in your life that will change your life is not something on your phone, but the app is you and your ability to be more conscious and realize that you have a lot of choices. Um, so it's something to entertain you know, for you to take a look at. Secret number three. Well, this is my favorite because this is something that we live and breathe every single day. Um, newsflash, nobody's perfect, yet everybody thinks they have to be. And this is a practice that is something that we go through every single day 
and many people, well, actually everybody does, but I think that once you realize that you cannot attain perfection, it takes the weight off of your shoulders, <laughs> of the extra weight actually, of trying to live into something that's just not even possible. And I use the analogy, um, you know, every day is, is a new day for me. I wake up with a different set of eyes every single day. Um, I learn new things about myself that I didn't know was possible from the day before. Um, I try new things. And what's so exciting about this is that your journey never ends and you can practice this every single day until you leave this earth. And the more present that you are in this practice, the more you enjoy your life, the things you'll have to look forward to, and really the people in it as well. So this is my favorite one, and, and really um, it's my way of telling everyone that I come in contact with um, that I'm giving you permission to just be you and know that you don't have to be perfect um, to be amazing. Another part that we've definitely learned is what I call carrying the weight from your past into your present. When we talk with people and we're coaching people, what ends up happening is most people come into the conversation with an already listening that I never have and I'm not and I'm, and I'm not going to, and they look at a diet or they look at some burden in their life where they're going to have to restrict and not have and be in pain and, and it's I hate the be awful. Like all that stuff. All that stuff when I said before, what you're against weakens you. What you don't realize, if you start to think about it, start to listen to the voice in your head, start to be present to the conversations you're telling people about, and you'll realize that what you've done is you've set yourself up. You're carrying the weight of your past. You're saying that everything in my future is done and over because whatever my past is, I don't know how to not stop that. Well, the first way to stop it is to stop it. Just stop it. Because as Jenny said, every day you start at zero. Every day you have an opportunity. And we also remind you, you're not going to do it perfect. No one does. Not even the most athlete, athletic people don't do it. So this is something really important to remember. Listen to yourself. And you might want to have a buddy help you see what maybe you're not seeing. Have a conversation. Just say, you know, I'm really curious. Like, you, we've been together. We're having lunch. Like, what do I say all the time? Just, just ask people. It's okay. You'd be surprised. And then say to them, would you know, would you be mind if I kind of shared with you what I kind of hear you say all the time? So sometimes the sheer fact, if you can get out of your head those things that are going on that you don't tell anyone else and you speak it, the power starts to dissipate. You will be surprised. I know that sounds strange, but I ask you, just try that. You'll find it makes a big difference. So here's the other challenge. There's a present you. It's the one right now that you know. You have a great relationship. I'm 57, almost 58. I've known this person. This is my present you. I've known it forever. And we all have this idea of some mythical future you, okay? One of the biggest challenges most people have is if you were going to go on vacation, you're okay with that because you go somewhere, you get a brochure, you see some pictures, and you buy your ticket, and you're already there. If it's Italy, you're already in Italy. You get it. The challenge that happens for most people is they have this idea that they want to lose weight, but losing 5 pounds, 10 pounds, it's not really that motivating unless you actually have a picture of where you're going, like what vacation you're going on in your mind. What are you going to look like? What are you going to feel like? That's why, as weird as it may sound, vision boards or getting some perspective, it helps you, especially when you're making changes. Otherwise, you'll get a week into it or two weeks into it, and it's like, this is just not worth it. Because you don't know where you're going. You have no idea. So it's very important to get present to that. And the last thing I want to share with you on this before we show you one little last video is the big shift that's happened for Jennifer and I. We lived forever in what I call the you have to. You have to exercise. You have to eat better. That's what you're telling yourself. That's what the doctors tell you. That's what everybody's, you know, you, you're in this place. This is not very exciting when you have to do anything. None of us like to have to do anything. And we don't like being told what we Nobody have to do likes either. Being told. And that makes you not want to do it even more. Right. So little by little, if you take those baby steps, or as like Kim said, you find something you like to do. Walk with some people in your group. Find a yoga class. Find if you like to dance. If you start to move along the scale and you start to make some improvements, not drastic things, you can get to a place where, believe it or not, you saw that when that one video of me, of like I was doing this thing, I was all upset. 
that's a 400 pound man on a spin bike with a seat that's this big and I'm in pain and there's nobody should ever be on that spin bike. <laughs> I thought it was the most horrifying thing on the face of the earth. I thought who in their right mind spins? Jennifer's a spin instructor, <laughs> certified spin instructor. I'm a certified spin instructor. We are really good at spinning. We absolutely love spinning. That man on there did not know what he was up to, hated it, thought I'd never do it my entire life. But little by little, as I started to see what it was like, I shifted that. doesn't mean that everybody will, but you will find something that you love. This is where you want to get, in the place where you want to exercise. You love eating better. I hated vegetables before Biggest Loser. I hated them. Now I roast them. I caramelize them. I love those types of things. You have to learn that. This is where we lived. We live over here. Not perfect, but we live in the world of what we want to do. And I will tell you, that makes a major shift in what's going on. And I think the last, yes, take a look at, this is kind of wrapping up um, our experience on Biggest Loser. This will show you the end of our journey on our season. Whoops. We're going to get all of you backstage changed into your weighing clothes, and we'll see you in a little bit, okay? okay. And our final eliminated team to weigh in is a father-daughter team, Jen and Jay. You already saw Jay earlier tonight. His daughter, 28-year-old Jen, first came to campus with her father by her side. Now she's ready to step out all on her own. Good. <laughs> the one thing that you have to understand is that even though we came here together, I need to do this for me. I know. Okay? Yeah. I feel like the weight of the world has been lifted off my shoulders, knowing that I don't have to focus on anybody else here but me. I love you. Me too. <sighs> Okay, Jen, it's time for you to step on the scale. Your starting weight was 278 pounds in order to take the lead from Denny. Have a chance at $100,000. You need to have lost more than 135 pounds. Jen, your current weight is... Congratulations. It's your turn, Jay. This season, Jay showed us what The Biggest Loser is all about. It's not how you start your journey. It's how you finish it. And now it all comes down to this. Jay, you made it all the way to the end. You were sent home. You came back. You're our yeah. comeback kid. You started out at 400 pounds to beat Denny to win the $100,000 at home prize. You need to have lost more than 195 pounds. He squares up his shoulders. It comes down to Jay and Denny. One person will be our at home winner. Jay, your current weight is. You're looking for more than 195, Jay. Oh. <laughs> so when you get on the scale and you don't like the number you see, that 14 pounds cost me $100,000. Mm -hmm. So I know the pain of weight loss. <laughs> so at this time, we um, are going to open up the the rest of our session here for any questions that you might have um, that you'd like us to answer. And I will just preface this by saying um, there is never a question that we have yet to like not answer. So whatever, you, whatever you're comfortable with asking, just go for it. Don't be afraid. Any questions? Oh, oh, oh. we've got a question over here. Just give it, so everybody can hear okay. the question. Yeah. answered this um, 
I wasn't here for the whole session. Mm -hmm. Did you go through any kind of psychotherapy or uh, psychological counseling through this process to sort of support you? And yeah, we actually had uh, we had a psychologist. I think he's yeah. not a psychiatrist, a psychologist um, on the ranch with us. Um, he would actually come around and be available um, right before somebody got eliminated. Because you get a little crazy when you're sequestered, and when people get sent home, um, when that's your life and that's what it is, it can be a little traumatic. Um, and it was nice to have somebody from the outside come in, and he was very fit himself, so he'd walk with us and exercise with us. And I used to say, uh, you know, for Dr. Hogan, it was great. Like, hey, you're one of the normal people. Bun you know, we're a bunch of crazies. It's great to talk to somebody that's normal here. <laughs> So um, we did have him at our disposal if we ever wanted to talk to him. The other thing, too, is that there was extensive um, psychological testing that went, um, that was like part and parcel to the medical testing that we had in order to gain clearance to be on the show. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I've got a question back there. I'll run uh -oh. back there. But Beginning. is there aftercare with The Biggest Loser? I mean, you do they keep in contact with you, or could you call them and say, you know, I'm backsliding a little bit? 100% 100 transparency in this. Um, the the aftercare is all up to you, just in taking responsibility um, for your health and what you want for yourself. Um, it's still up to you to maintain any relationships. They're always open. Um, we keep in touch with our trainers. We keep in touch with producers. Um, all of the alumni, for the most part, we stay connected, and we're a support for one another. So very much like any relationship it's 100 percent up to the person to it's like continue. what doctor it's like what dr k said she was talking to us a little bit before we came on and she's all there to help anybody but her thing that's hard for her she, you know she can help people lose weight she can help people stop smoking but you have to take the first step yeah so i can't stress enough there is a ton of people like for us that will help any of us but you have to at least take that first step yeah I know the show inspired myself, mm -hmm. and of course, I wasn't relentless trying to get on the show <laughs> like you did. But what would, where would you be today if you didn't actually get that opportunity oh, to be on God. the show? Like, have you th ever thought about that? In it's really funny that you actually ask me that question. I haven't thought about that in a really long time. Um, I'll, answer, I'll answer for me. I don't even. I, I honestly, can. I, I don't even. I'm sorry, I can I tell you. Know. Probably, chances are that I probably would be where I was, to be perfectly well, honest. yeah. <laughs> because, and that's where Jenny and I see it as a responsibility. Um, who knows why any of us get anything that happens to us in life? We don't know. You don't know. But there's something that happens. There's something that, I think the biggest thing that Jenny and I got, have gotten from the show was it's great to feel great and, and to feel better than where we were. But you have no idea what it's like to actually know that there's somebody someplace that maybe you touched, moved, and inspired and it set them off on something. And the same thing happens for us now. So I think the biggest thing that we learned is that we were given a gift, we're constantly learning, and we feel a great gratitude to make sure that we're, we don't know, you don't know, because there's more people that have made life changes without a Biggest Loser yeah. or anything else. So I think that's what you really realize is that each of us in this room has the power and the ability to connect for ourselves and for others, and Jennifer and I are going to beat a dead horse of that because I, I have to be honest, you know, I, I probably would have been where I was because I didn't know that I had that in me. And I feel like that's why when Jillian sat me down in New England or New Zealand when we were there, it's like, what is wrong with you? I was like, look, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the strongest, I'm, you know, I was every knot under the world, and, and I didn't understand that that's the life I was leading. And she got me to realize that it wasn't anybody else, it was me. And I kept telling myself that story time and time again. So I honestly believe that Jenny and I are here, that somebody in this room someplace was meant to hear what we have to say, not because it's us. It's just we, we're a channel. I mean, how did we get on? I don't know. I have no yeah, clue. Yeah, it's, it's funny. And thank you for asking yeah. that question because I, until you asked that, I actually hadn't thought about that in such a long time. Um, I mean, in the position that I was in when I had first started, I was 28 years old. Um, I just turned 32 this past, uh, you know, this past January. My life was going nowhere fast. Um, I loved my parents, but I did work for a family-owned business. I literally sat in my apartment by myself at my desk, and I, I worked, and I wasn't around people that had the same goals. I just was like, 
I was surviving. And so to, to think of what my life would be now, I don't, I feel like it, it can't even like enter my mind. It's almost like, um, it makes me like feel uncomfortable to even like think about what that would be like. <laughs> uh, right. Isn't that weird? Um, now, because my life literally, it just, it just keeps opening up and expanding and my relationships keep, keep expanding and what I learn about myself keeps expanding and, and just like the chances that I take and like the things that I go for that I maybe wouldn't have the courage to say or do or be, I mean, I was a pretty, I was a pretty audacious little kid I, yeah. too, but there was also a lot of like self-confidence issues there from being like the chubby kid my entire life. So I can't imagine what it would be like if it opened up and really, truly thank you for just bringing that up because it's just another reminder for me. You, you've actually helped to inspire me and, and, you know, touch me in a way that I actually didn't think and see, of. And see so what you just you. did, <laughs> what you just did is what you just did for Jennifer <laughs> is what we've said to everybody in the audience. You don't realize what you can do to change someone's life by just yeah. opening up not talking about what they can't do, and what, but literally talk to a person and connect to them and just find out where they're at. Find out where they're at and ask them where they want to be. And sometimes what we found for people, even without anything else, just say, hey, you want to go for a walk. Sometimes just the sheer sense that you spent time with somebody and listened to them, you can change lives with that. So mm -hmm. ask questions. So thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay, one last question yeah. here. Hi, my name is Lisa Woodrum. And Hi, Lisa. I... Uh, Followed you on your season, and I thought it was one of the best seasons oh, of the Biggest Loser. Thank you. Very inspirational. I've lost 110 pounds. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and I followed you, and it was very you inspirational when I was losing the weight because I was losing it really the same time. And I remember yeah. that feeling of like, and I've watched Biggest Loser several seasons, and I'd watch it go down, and, and I'd be losing the weight, but like, they'd lose so fast on TV, and I'd be like, damn, they're skinny. Yeah. Every season. <laughs> but now I feel like I'm pretty good. But, um, but you look phenomenal. Thank you. My question for both of you is, um, how much independence did you have with the preparation of your food, oh. and what kind of guidelines were you given? I understand you were probably given a calorie. Were you mm -hmm. given macros? I'm so excited that you asked this question. Yes, okay, so I love talking about this. So um, we were actually given a kitchen um, filled and stocked with the best foods that you could ever imagine. Um, when we got on the show, we were each given like a calorie count of what we can have our daily calorie count um, for the the beginning of the day. I, I forget, like for every, every mine day. Mine was like 1632. I think mine was like 1477 or something like that. And um, we were given a little calorie counting book. And as you saw, um, as you saw it in the presentation, we had like a, um, a body monitoring system so we could count and there was a catalog that we could actually check and see how much calories were in what we were eating. So we counted our calories. However, the coolest part was is that because there was no limit on what, what it was that we could eat, we were given this like fridge and freezer filled with food and they would go shopping for us on an approved list. And because I'm so organized and anal retentive and just like, like to be like the owner of the list, like I created the shopping list for our entire um, season every single week. And I would have everybody compile it. Um, and then I would deliver it to the producers, but literally they encouraged us to read labels, experiment with foods. Like if we didn't like something, make it and like, just like, if you made it and you didn't like it, throw it out. Like, just try something new because there was no other way that we were ever going to get the opportunity to do it where there wasn't a dollar amount associated with it. And we couldn't try something new. Like, it was just, it was a really cool time to experiment. So, yeah. Which is a good segue. <laughs> you are going to be in the chef's demonstration. Yeah, area we are. Too. Perfect. So, yeah. yeah. So, you'll have a chance. We would like to thank you very much. Jay and Jennifer Jacobs, give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Wonderful <laughs> presentation. You're really inspiration. Thank you. All right.